I'm Joe Marks, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript spoke with Dr. Jill Stein, Green Party presidential candidate, at her Northampton rally. Nell Sanders then heard what NHS students and teachers have to say about the impact of third parties on the 2016 election. Connor McClendon spoke to the Boys and Girls Cross Country captains for Hamped Up, and Meredith Pavlovich highlighted the NHS dance community. Hi, my name is Elena Fragamini. I'm reporting for The Transcript. I'm here at First Churches in Northampton at a Jill Stein event. So do you support Jill Stein? For president? No, I do not. Why? Uh, I organize uh, for Bernie Sanders during the primary, uh, and I believe in Bernie's message, and I think that, you know, at the end of the day, either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton are going to become the next president. Were you a Bernie Sanders supporter before yes, that? Yes, absolutely. I was a Bernie Sanders supporter um, with the realization that eventually Bernie was going to lose and that Jill would be the logical leap for most Bernie supporters. It stuns me that anyone would make the leap from Hillary, I mean, from Bernie to Hillary, which is like the Grand Canyon, when the leap from Bernie to Jill is like a crack in the sidewalk. It makes no sense to me, but people are fearful. Of in terms of me myself, you know, it's like American democracy and the country of America was not created uh, to be run by businessmen. It was not created to be um, run by experts. We were created to be a democracy, everyday people. The experience I do not have to bring to office is the experience of taking money from big, powerful special interests and then delivering for them while in office. Uh, my experience is actually working with the people of the Massachusetts and the people of the country to do the um, things that we as citizens have been working to do, to get money out of politics. We passed public financing here in Massachusetts. It was repealed by the Democratic legislature, but we the people passed it. Uh, we cleaned up our coal plants. We shut down some of our polluting incinerators, and we created a more racially just system of representation in the legislature. So we can get stuff done when it's we the people without the lobbyists and the machine politics. This is the kind of solution that the American people are actually clamoring for. So thank you for being a part of, of the effort to get the thank word you so much. out. Is there anything else you want to tell the students of Northampton High School? Oh, I'd say just, you know, you guys have the power and don't for a minute let them tell you otherwise. There are 43 million millennials who are locked in debt. Young people have the power. If we get the word out, we can cancel the debt and make public higher education free and ensure that you have a job on the other end. Remember, you've got the numbers, you've got the vision, you've got the power. Get the word out, come out and vote, and don't let them intimidate you into throwing your, your vote away with more of a failed two-party corporate system. Invest your vote in the future that we deserve, a peaceful, just, green, sustainable future that is within our reach the minute we stand up for it. Thank you so much. I'm Nell Sanders and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. This past Sunday, our Media and Communications Coordinator, Elena Fragamini, had a chance to interview the Green Party's presidential candidate, Jill Stein, at a rally at the First Churches in Northampton. Stein has been the Green Party's nominee both in the 2016 election as well as the 2012 election, and is known for her far-left views and goals. The question is, what role does Jill Stein and third parties play in this election? Libertarian Gary Johnson and Green Party candidate Jill Stein appeal to the large population of voters who are unhappy with their first two options, Hillary Clinton and Donald J. Trump. But could either Johnson or Stein actually win? The current polls show that Johnson and Stein together only account for a little over 10% of the votes. So if they can't win, what other roles do they play? Oftentimes a third party candidate can change the presidential outcome by taking votes that would have otherwise gone to one of the two primary candidates. Most liberals and Democrats believe a vote for a third party candidate is a vote for GOP nominee Donald J. Trump. I interviewed NHS students and teachers on their opinions of Jill Stein, the Green Party, and the overall role of third parties in this election. I am Corinne Goriat and I'm a senior. I'm Kara Hudson-Erdman, I'm a senior. I'm Davis Bernstein and I'm a senior. 
Suzanne Strauss. I teach English at Northampton High School. So we interviewed Jill Stein this past weekend, and I'm asking students on their opinions on her. Um, what do you think about her and the Green Party? Well, honestly, I'm not a big fan. I think we kind of missed our chance for a progressive like Jill Stein when Bernie Sanders lost the race. It's way too late to change something now. It should have happened months ago, so now I'm supporting the Democratic nominee. Although, like, I agree with a lot of her stance, and I think she's doing some great things, especially with the North Dakota Access Pipeline, I really have doubts about, I mean, I can't vote, but I have doubts about people who would vote for a Green Party candidate in an election where the stakes are just so high, with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton practically neck and neck, you know, having a, um, a third party candidate amassing votes is just, it's, it's a huge risk. And we really, I think as a country, cannot take the risk of having Donald Trump as president. I don't know much about Jill Stein, her, what she stands for. I mean, I know about the Green Party, but I would say that I think the election's pretty important. And I would, at this particular moment in time, I think any vote that goes for Jill Stein is probably taking a, a vote away from the Democratic candidate. I have a lot of interest in the Green Party just from their political views. I think that it's really important that one of their focal issues is climate change, which has definitely not gotten as much attention as it should have um, during our, you know, typical Republican Democrat election cycle. Um, so that's really important to me. And then also Jill Stein is definitely an advocate for women's rights, which is also important to me. Do you think she ever has a chance of potentially winning or is that just never going to happen? I have to say no. I, I think that would be statistically improbable just looking at the polls now. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. That was awesome. Jill Stein has definitely sparked some political debate at NHS. So what are your opinions on this topic in the 2016 presidential election? Email me your thoughts or other ideas for controversial stories. Finally, on behalf of the Transcript crew, we would like to formally thank Jill Stein for taking time out of her busy schedule to have an interview with us. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. I have been dancing since I was like five years old for about 12 years. I've been dancing for almost nine years now. 11 years. And I've been dancing for 10 years and going on to my 11th year. I'm currently in four dances, um, tap, ballet, and jazz, and then a jazz duet as well. Jazz, tap, ballet, hip hop, modern, point and contemporary. This year I do five hip hop classes a week in Boston and Northampton, and then I do ballet twice a week. I participate in about 12 dances. Some of them are jazz, lyrical, tap, ballet. Um, I take some technique classes, um, and then I also assist with about five classes. I also take about 12 classes, um, like lyrical, jazz, tap, modern, like basic classes. Why did you choose to dance and stay with it? I think I started off the way everyone started off, you know. Um, being enrolled in a ballet class or two when you're like, I don't know, five years old. And then, I don't know, it was just something I really enjoyed, and so I stuck with it. When you do so many dances, how do you not mix them up? You kind of, over time, learn the different technique, and you practice each week over and over and over. So I think that just helps me not mix them up. What is the hardest part about dancing? The hardest part is probably like balancing it with your everyday life. And it's very hard to get homework done for school and um, sleeping is really tough because we usually get home at about nine o'clock at night. When I'm dancing, I think about mostly like what I'm doing right then and there. It's a lot of concentration on your, what your feet are doing because they're moving so fast, you know, and you have your arms. I don't know, it's a lot of things to think about at one time. Who do you look up to for support? A lot of the people I train with out in Boston. I've met a lot of people that are in like their mid-twenties that have gone through so many different experiences with dance, and so I always look up to them. My tapster, David, he's an amazing dancer. He's like one of the best tappers I've ever met. And so like I look at him dancing, I'm like, wow, like I want to be like that. I aspire to be I, as good as he is. I spend so much time doing it that it just kind of is my life and I don't really 
imagine my life without it. And it's just kind of what I go to when something's wrong. Dancing, I think, has made me just like a better person. It's motivated me. I know if I don't do well in school, my family won't allow me to go and dance in Boston or anything. So it's really just like pushed me to be a better person all around. Y'all ready for this? Hello and welcome to week two of Hamped Up. I'm your host, Connor McClendon, and right now I am standing on David Wright Field where last Friday the Northampton Blue Devils football team beat Longmeadow for the first time since 1996 before any member on the current Blue Devils roster was even born. The Blue Devils won 36-14 as Elijah Davis rushed for four touchdowns for the second straight week. Northampton moves to 2-0 and will now go on the road for four straight games. The football team is not the only team off to a fast start this season. The cross country team is 3-0 and this week I sat down with two members of the team to talk about their expectations for the season. I'm here with Layla Marcusian and Jonathan Dean and we are here to talk about the cross country team. So, first question for you guys. Well, both teams obviously off to a fast start. You won your first two mates and you got to beat Amherst which must feel good. Yep. So, what are your goals for the end of the season in terms of where you finish as a team? Uh, I'd say for the boys team, um, definitely win Western Mass is the ultimate goal. So we have a relatively young team um, that has been developing for the past few, year, few years. I think this year is a great accumulation of all the work we put in, so that's a goal. Um, and on the girls' side, we came into the season ranked number one in Western Mass, and so I hope that we can keep up that standard and hopefully win Western Mass. So this team, the cross-country team, as well as the other track teams at the school, especially since Brandon Palmer came here, it, they've competed at a high level and been very successful. So did you guys ever feel pressure to keep that winning tradition going uh, at Northampton? I think it's important as upperclassmen, we really want to keep that legacy going and show the underclassmen that we are quite the powerhouse and we want to like, keep up these high standards that people have for the team. The cross-country team, one of the most popular teams in school, is enormous. Uh, and you guys have the reputation of having great camaraderie. So how do you guys maintain that team, team chemistry uh, throughout the season with such a big team? We do a lot of things all together. Like we do psych, which I know a lot of other teams do, um, where we give each other little gifts throughout the season. And that's um, kind of like a random matchup, so it's a good way to get to know someone else on the team. And uh, we also do some pretty preposterous uh, spirit spirit themes. Uh, for example, Deep V is something we're doing right now. Uh, I have a Deep V on right now, um, and we'll rip it off right before the race, and I think that's kind of a bonding exercise. Well, that's all we have for this week. Thank you guys so much for being here. Good Thanks a lot. Season. Thank you. In other sports news, the field hockey team lost their first game of the season, dropping a 3-1 to decision to Greenfield on Tuesday. The boys soccer team tied their first league game 1-1 to against Holyoke, and the girls' soccer team remains undefeated at 3-0-2. Make sure to check out our website, www.nhstechnology.org, for more pictures, video, and event coverage. This has been The Transcript. See you next week. My name is Jasper Kessin. I'm 17 years old, and I go to Northampton High School, NHS. I definitely would consider it streetwear, because like historically, streetwear has a focus on, you know, the design and um, as opposed to sort of different materials. It's usually just kind of cotton with a cool screen print.